So we obviously know that there is a crisis at our southern border. We also know that what is going on is a direct result of Joe Biden and Joe Biden's policies, right? This is not due to some conspiracy theory about root causes down in Guatemala or something like that. The reason why people are coming over in the currently historic numbers that they are is a direct result of Joe Biden. We obviously know this to be the case, but we also know it to be the case that this is an issue that Biden is essentially underwater with, with most Americans, right? Most Americans do not like what is happening down south. And the reason why I bring that up, according to polls, the reason why I bring that up is because not only is what's going on on our border just an objectively bad thing because it's a bad thing, but it's also a very good political opportunity for the right, for conservatives, for Republicans to really take control of the narrative on this issue. It is a political goldmine, essentially, for Republicans to really grasp the narrative on immigration, on the border, and really demonstrate, hey, here's why Trump was right on the border question. Here's why we need to be securing the southern border. The issue is, in order to do that, in order to really take control of this opportunity, Republicans have to be willing to wholeheartedly and honestly say what needs to be said when it comes to this issue. And they essentially have the mandate to do so, right? Because this is not an issue, is exactly an issue that Republicans are unpopular with with Americans. They are popular, which means Republicans are essentially in the position where they can and they have the power to take a really hardline stance on the issue and really push that, that Overton window to the right. But the problem is that's not what you're getting. And the my, my essential proposition in this video is going to be that we need to basically change our rhetoric when it comes to the border. And we need to be able to have an honest discussion of the border crisis, which I really don't think is happening. Okay? And I'll explain why again. But... Before I get into that, I, I think I would like to point out this, which is that it has historically, over the past few years, been the big criticism by the populist right on the issue of immigration. What has it been? It has been, well, you know, most conservatives, and it was true, most conservatives were willing to say what needed to be said on the question of illegal immigration. They're really willing to take a hardline stance on illegal immigration. But the problem has always been legal immigration. That was really the issue that conservatives for a while were kind of scared to touch. But it used to be the case that they were really willing to take a hardline stance on that illegal immigration question, right? They were willing to say, well, I'm fine with le uh, legal immigration, but illegal immigration, that is so, so bad. And obviously that is something that we collectively need to try to push out of the minds of the ordinary conservative. We need to be willing to tell these people, get, get most people to recognize, well, legal immigration is a problem too, if not equally or a, an even larger problem than illegal immigration. But what's concerning to me is that I'm actually watching the Overton window when it comes to the conservative establishment and the mainstream conservative narrative push to the left on this issue while, while the American public, in terms of approval rating, pushes to the right. It is basically mystifying. And what do I essentially mean by this? Well, when you turn on Fox, daytime Fox News, when you listen to most Republican politicians talk about this border crisis, what are their main kind of arguments, right? The main arguments, if you, if you heard, and this is something I didn't really pick up on initially, but I'm starting to notice, hey, what's going on here? Do you notice that they, they, they normally circulate around like, oh, well, there's a humanitarian crisis at the border. Look at how these migrants are being treated on the journey and stuff like that. And now, you know, the, the, the big argument is that, well, they're bringing a lot of COP19 over, right? right? They, a lot of them are COVID positive and that, that's why this is so bad. Here's my problem with that type of narrative. And again, when you really listen to the way they talk, they're talking about this border crisis, this is what they sound like, especially on the whole issue of the humanitarian question. They essentially sound like the same exact way Democrats talked about the border crisis under the Trump era, but they were basically arguing different things, right? But... I would say that the big problem with this this sort of narrative is that it, it really dodges the true nature of the border crisis. And that's to say, let me just say it outright. You know, the big problem with what's going on at the border is, is not because there is really not the fact that, you know, there's a humanitarian crisis or whatever it is, or the fact that they're bringing COVID. No, 
the big issue, the reason why the border crisis is so bad, primarily, not to say those other things aren't true, but primarily is the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of foreign nationals who are invading our country without asking. That's what's happening at the border. That's, that's the reason why illegal immigration is so bad. And, and, and that's what we, we should be saying. That is, that is really the primary case to be made against what's going on at our border. And I, I don't think that's an original take from me. That's not, I, I, it's not a brilliant, oh my gosh, I, I'm, I'm far from the first person to say that. But my big question to Republicans is why are you not willing to actually say this? Why are why does when it comes to the border do they always try to cop out of just saying hey it's bad because we have a bunch of people who don't belong in our country coming into our country why do they deflect from that why do they instead say well it's so bad because you know you have all these migrant kids going on it's literally sounding like a democrat on the question essentially or well it's bad because they're bringing covid okay sure that's bad what if they weren't bringing covid would it suddenly be okay well that, that that's essentially the implication that we're getting from a lot of these republicans and that's not the say that I don't think the COVID thing or, or even the humanitarian thing are totally ineffective arguments on their own. Like, yeah, I guess there's something that could kind of help add fuel to the fire, but you need that primary argument of, well, this is bad because the, you have a bunch of people who don't belong in our country coming into our country. Okay. And, and that's just not what you're getting. And quite frankly, I, I, I guess what they're probably thinking on the question and what their idiot political consultants have told them is, well, you know, you, gotta, you have to try to kind of take the soft core nuanced stance on the border because, uh, you know, that way you sound more moderate and that way it'll be more convincing to people. But my question is, is that really more convincing? Like ask yourself, is it really more of a convincing argument to say that, well, we have Joe Biden has to secure the border because, you know, you have these migrant kids you know, and they're being placed in kind of bad conditions, even though like the border centers that they're in is probably better than the journey they were coming along, right? Is that a compelling argument? Or do you think it is actually a more compelling argument, a more convincing argument to say to the American public, look, you have all these people. We don't know who they are. They don't have permission to come into their country. They are basically invading our country. They're going to come to your cities, you know, and, and, and they're going to, at, at best, they're going to economically outcompete you and kind of screw up with your local economy and at worst many of these people not all of them but many of them are going to bring drugs crime etc what really is the better argument do you think to the american public it is my opinion that actually taking the harder right stance on this issue and i don't even think it's a hard right stance i really think it's a common sense stance actually is more effective, right? And we've talked about this before. We've talked about kind of why strong rhetoric usually is actually more effective than weak rhetoric, you know, purely because of the case that it just sounds more confident, right? And that's the other problem I see with it. I, it just, it, the, the way they're speaking about this border question is just not confident, right? It is a soft core thing, like, well, you, you know, they're taking such a stance. But I would argue that if they took a more hardline stance, number one, they would sound more convincing. But again, number two, let me recircle back to the other point I was talking about, which is that, again, this is an issue that Republicans are popular on, right? This is not something that they have to make sound more moderate than it already is. Most Americans don't like what's going on at the border. So take a hardline stance, okay? And it is really concerning to me. It is really concerning to me that, you know, Republicans are now drifting left on the issue of illegal immigration. You know, here we are trying to push for, you know, a reduction in legal immigration, if not a full moratorium, right? That, that's kind of what we politically believe. And we, we've kind of had this consensus that, well, they'll, they'll be tough on illegal immigration. We're not really concerned about that. Let's try to push them on legal immigration. They're not being tough on illegal immigration either. That's what you see here, you know? And that, that, that's really what ultimately needs to be corrected. So that's basically the point of this video. You know, that, that's all I had to essentially say on the issue. But we, we really need harder rhetoric on this border question, right? Look at 2016 Trump, if you don't believe me. I mean, look at, we can go back. You can look at the way he talked about illegal immigration. He talked about the border. Compare that to, and, and by the way, what he was saying was less politically popular back then than it was now. So again, considering the fact that it is more popular now, compare that to the way Republicans talk about the border now. It's always a cop-out. It's always a diversion to COVID or, or whatever it is. Not just, hey, illegal immigrants are coming into the country. 
in record numbers. That's it. That's all that needs to be said. Anyways, guys, with that being said, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. We're going to wrap up here. Um, content, you know, it, it'll be a little bit slower. Like like we've talked about before, I, I am moving states soon. Actually, I might make a whole video on that. I might make a whole video reflecting on my time in California. Um, but before we go, actually, I wanted to announce that my channel is now eligible for memberships, right? And I, I honestly don't know if I'll keep this. We might transition this to a website at some point. Obviously, I'll, I'll let the members know if that's what we do. But for now, I actually set up memberships. So let me actually go over what you get because it is pretty epic, okay? And we do we do face a lot of demonetizing on YouTube. So it would be greatly appreciated. But anyways, we've got Dow Pack General, which is $3.99 a month. And for this perk, you get a um, special loyalty badge in all the live chats in your comments. Also, during live streams, we get these special members-only emojis, which are pretty epic, right? Um, you also get... Get priority reply to comments, but most importantly, you get access to our monthly Q and A video that we're going to be doing, answering your questions. Um, but uh, if you do want to submit the questions for that, you are going to have to upgrade to the Vince Dow Patriot tier, which is six ninety nine a month, and this obviously includes access to all the perks from the previous levels. But it also uh, in includes member shout outs on live stream, so you get you get shout out on my live stream, and you get access obviously to the monthly Q and A. But you are the ones who can actually submit the questions for that, and then. I think the best thing, right, is you get you get access to two exclusive videos every month, right? And let me say that these videos will probably be a little bit spicier, a little bit more controversial, or I don't know, just a little bit more esoteric than the normal videos you get on our channel. So yeah, there you go. That's the Vince Dow Patriot tier. And then for $14.99 a month to become a Vince Dow nationalist, um, you then get access to a monthly Zoom call with me so we can actually chat basically one-on-one. -on -one. Obviously, you also get access to the monthly Q&A, but you get priority questions, right? We, we, we answer your questions with priority. You'll also get a personalized propaganda poster, courtesy of our team, um, a personalized video shout out if you want one. And probably the best thing about this tier, you get free admission, okay? Free admission to APU events if we're ever in town. So, you know, pretty epic so if you want to become a member consider doing so i'd greatly appreciate it but yeah anyways guys that'll wrap up this video thank you very much for watching again remember republicans take a harder stance on the border question and until next time see you guys later hey guys hope you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to like and subscribe and be sure to click some of the stuff on my left for some more awesome content also to follow me on social media check out my podcast and some more awesome stuff be sure to check out the links down in my description all right Peace.